The immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the Long Rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. Smack through the heart. Hawkeye. This track of Ojibwa moccasin. I guess that adds truth to the reports the Commissioner General's been getting. Someone's putting guns into the hands of the Ojibwas. This looked like maybe we too late, my brother. Well, maybe not. The Ojibwas had all the guns they wanted. There'd be blood and fire up and down this whole territory. Well, let's put this poor trapper to rest and get on to Watertown. Just Phil Armstrong and some of the boys kicking up their heels. Probably spent too much time tapping the keg over to the tavern. Please, Pa, you'll get hurt. It's all right. You bully, I'll scratch your eyes out. In a minute, I'll forget you're a woman. Hold it! Your manners are bad enough the way they are. Now just step away from the lady, nice and gentle like. I don't know who you be, Woodsman, but unless you want to be tarred with the same brushes as traitors, pull in your horns and be on your way. Calling a man a traitor don't make him one, unless you got proof. Them Ojibwe Indians never had no firearms, so he opened up shop. If you have any charges to make, make them with the law. Otherwise, get your friends and clear out. Paul, you... You better come in and lie down. Oh, stop treating me like I was made of eggshells, Brett. That little shaking hardly must me. My daughter and I are powerful beholden to both of you. Maybe I can show you something that'll make you stop wondering if I'm a traitor or not. Please? You'd better keep your eye on him. This is my trademark. The sun with the rays shining from it. Yeah, that's nice balance. But that sunburst won't prevent it from getting into the wrong hands. Nary a gun leaves this shop without the mark of even cotton burned into it. I like to feel that I put more than just iron and wood into each one of them. And if you find one of my weapons in anybody's hands, you'll find my mark and a record of it in that book. Even. Just heard about the trouble with Armstrong. Got here quick as I could. Everything all right? Outside a broken window pane. Neil's concern's more for Beth than it is for me. When a fellow's courting the prettiest girl in town, he's got to be mighty concerned about his future father-in-law as well. <laughs> Rest my handles, Ellsworth. I'm called Hawkeye. This is my blood brother, Chingachgook. It's a real pleasure. You certain Beth's all right? And see for yourself. She's taking care of some chores. All right. There's a fine, upstanding example of the opportunities of this new country. Came here less than six months ago, hardly more than the clothes on his back. Owns the trading post now. Well, then uh, he can sell guns, too. No, sir. As soon as he met Beth, got rid of the few guns he stocked. Sends anybody who wants a rifle or a musket over to me now. Well, that's keeping it in the family. Chingachgook and me have got some business of our own to tend to. We'd best get on with it. Oh, sure. Well, good luck, boys. And don't forget, so long as you're in Watertown, you don't have to knock on my door. Just come right in. All right. Goodbye. Good luck. Men who make guns have open face. Act like have open heart. Yeah, quicksand looks honest enough till you walk on it. What we need is a good close look at one of those guns the Ojibwas are using. Only squaw 
wall, Nazi Ojibwa. He's behind tree. Wait. If you don't get him the first shot, you might scare him away. But you've given me an idea. That ambush and skunk would get powerful courageous if he thought he'd shot one of us. Getting our hands on that rifle and him ready to talk's just what the doctor ordered. But doctor not order Mohican use head for target. I wouldn't be too sure about that. You shot my blood brother. He'll die for this. Go ahead. I'll keep him busy. Face of man who make gun. Hide evil tongue of serpent. It appears that way. What I can't figure out, though, is how Mr. Eben Cotton can be back in his shop, yet get word out ahead of us to set up this ambush. My brother think Ojibwa know we come? He's never seen us before. He called us by name. Whoever gave you that information and that gun are the same man. Maybe you'd better tell us who it is. Uncle, tear tongue out first. Maybe a few days in the Watertown jail and you'd decide to just loosen it instead. Come on, let's go. This is big business even, biggest you'll ever do. I don't understand. A man can't use more than one gun at a time. But you haven't heard the good news even. Mr. Oates is willing to buy every rifle in your shop. You're joshing. Cash business even, hard cash. What's more, Mr. Oates will take every gun you can make for the next few months. Yeah? Oh, I couldn't let that many guns go, Neil. Not unless I knew what this Mr. Oates was going to do him. Oh, I thought you understood, even. He trades up and down the territory. He's stopping by my place tonight just to pick up them guns. Well, it'll take one man more than a year to sell all the guns I can turn out. Just a settler. Beth, perhaps you can reason with him? Selling off his guns to Mr. Oates will prove he ain't making them for the engines. You'll have to stay out here, all of you. You stopped us taking care of that trailer before. You can't stop us now. Yes, yes. yes. somebody yes. ought to take her now. I've got a lot of patience, Mr. Armstrong, but you're wearing mine thin. Now you be good, white, brave. Go home. Step on the side, engine. I'm gonna get that traitor. Hawkeye say, you stay out. That's Phil Armstrong. What's he loose mouthing to folks about now? Uh, the usual, Mr. Cotton. Only I'm afraid this time it's more than just loose talk to go by. The only ones listening to him are the loafers at the tavern. That might have been the way it was before I put an Ojibwa in the lockup for trying to ambush me with this. That's an even cotton rifle. There's no denying that. Neil, you picked this up for one of your customers. Even I don't take kindly to your casting suspicion my way after all I'd done for you. Neil, Pa wasn't accusing you. He was only mentioning that he turned it over to you. I'm sorry, Beth, for your...
For your sake, I'd be willing to overlook most anything. Except a man who'd be willing to sell his own people for the sake of a little profit. Mr. Cut. I gotta tell her it ain't true. I'd rather she'd see me in my coffin than selling guns to Indians. Folks in Watertown have got your coffin almost built. The set engine in the lockup points his finger somewhere else. He's liable to be driving in the last nail. Gun's been accounted for. Appears like more than just that Indian escaped. My brother think man who make guns empty jail too? I got an idea the answer to that's in the Ojibwa village. Enough. You fix. Talk, let white squaw go. You scurvy savage. You can flay me alive. I'll make no guns for you. That's my daughter's freed now. Bring White Squaw. When White Squaw come, Tawak have way make you want fixed gun. That looks like the gunsmith's wagon. Man who make rifle must be in big teepee. The way to find out is to take a look. Pa! Beth, they ain't harmed you? I'm all right, Pa. Beasts. Don't fix any guns for them, Pa. Even though they torture both of us. White Squaw won't go free. Father live. Tell him, fix guns. That's too high a price for either of us. I think I can change your mind. Neil! The Ojibwa call me Ondaga, prophet of victory. You traitor. To think that I was in love with you makes me shrivel inside. May you be struck dead, you turncoat renegade. I've turned against no one. The Ojibwas are my people. But your skin is white. You say that as if I should be proud of the fact. I'm prouder that my mother was daughter of an Indian chief. You mean you're announcing a civilized way of living? A business you built up from scratch? A position? What position? Owner of a grubby trading post? Here I'm a chief, a leader of warriors who'll drive you white settlers from your lands. Ondaga, no more talk, want guns. There's no torture you know that can make me ask Pa to lift a finger to help you. Squaw must do as her husband tells her. I'd rather be roasted alive than even think of being your wife. Not my wife, Beth. His. And if Nponka don't suit you, I can pick you another. It's up to you, Eben. You start making guns, a dance at your daughter's wedding. Pa. 
Oh. It'll mean death and destruction for innocent people. I... I can't help it, Beth. The gunsmith will work faster alone. Bring Squaw. White man of trading post. Wear feathers of chief. Yeah, that girl doesn't look too happy about it either. I reckon maybe the answer to a lot of things is in that teepee. Of you, I'd say you'd had a lesson in gentle persuasion. Oh, that'll heal. It's the safety of my daughter's got me tied up here. Those Ojibwas are getting real clever, using heartstrings instead of rawhide to hold a man prisoner. All the same, I've got to ask you to leave your workbench. Not without Beth. Once you get free of this place, then we can figure out what to do about her. Look, my mind is made up. The Ojibwas want guns. I'm making guns. It's as fine a piece of work as I've ever seen. How many do you figure you'll have done by morning? Uh, six or eight. Wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of one of those. You heard voices, Eben. Who was you talking to? Okay. I warn you, Eben. I can only stand so much of your joshing. Before another moon, each warrior will have a brother to this. Then no white man will face us. We buy for the guns in the morning, Eben. They better be finished, or your daughter will be. like a firing squad going to draw their weapons. Firing squad shoot only one man. Looks like war party. Keep me covered. I've got to find out what's going on in there. Done well, Eben. I'm doing best as I can. Now, why don't you keep your promise to let Beth go? Insurance, Eben. Without her being here, you might decide to close up shop. There's a gun for each of you. We come back later for more. You'll work. You better leave, too. I can use her help. She'll save me a good many steps fetching. No harm in that. Just so long as you get on with these. I reckon you're ready to go out the back way now. Yeah, sure. Keep going straight ahead till you come to a clearing. Chingachgook is waiting for you. Yeah, go ahead, then. Get the gunsmith and the girl. You're too late. They're 
gone. We've still got you, and enough guns to make you our first target. Take them away. I can't go another step. Not need to. Ojibwa loose trail. Watertown that way. You rest. You're not going back. Blood of white brother is my blood. This is a game you should appreciate, Hawkeye, being a good shot yourself. Each of my braves is going to try a shot to see who can hit closest to your eyes. Well, that sounds real interesting. But if I were going to go on the war path, I'd use military discipline. The Army always uses a firing squad to get rid of its spies. Oh, not a bad idea at all. Just like a regular general. I'll get a blindfold. Uh, never mind. Uh, this is one side I don't want to miss. All right, put him up against the tree. Shoot when you give the signal. Get in line now. Any last words, Hawkeye? No, but I got a notion this is the last time I'll see you at Jibwa shooting rifles. Prophet of victory is a prophet of doom. He brought bad medicine with those guns. He traitor to both Indian and white man. He die by slow death. Oh. Oh. I reckon he should be punished by white man's law. If you don't mind, we'll take him in. You take. Did all guns burn in big fire? Time you ate something, Paul. Just as soon as I finish. Oh, howdy, boys. You're just in time. I was about to sit down to eat. Bring some more food, Beth. Oh, that won't be necessary. We just stopped by to tell you that Neil and his friend are on their way to pay the penalty for their wrongdoing. Just wanted to make sure it wouldn't backfire. <laughs> oh, that only happens to special gums I fix up for a gibbers. Me not think his joke when White Brother is in front of firing line. <laughs> but you do good job. Make gun bad. <laughs> well, that's the first time I ever been praised for spoiling guns instead of fixing them. <laughs> well, the art of being a fine gunsmith comes in handy in more ways than you might think. Well, even we've got to be on our way. Goodbye. Well, thanks a lot, Hawkeye, and good luck to you both. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook. Last of the Mohicans. <laughs> <laughs>